Good morning. It's very nice to be with you in this, our communion service. We are, in addition to this um, online service, we are having our first communion service in the church building itself this morning. And we look forward to the time when we're all back there. Let's hope it will be quite soon. Let's pray before we begin. Lord, help us. Bless us in our being cast down. Bless us in our despair. Bless us in our fear. We, we are um, wondering what's going to happen with the coronavirus. It seems to be going on and on. But we trust in you. We believe in you. We love you. Our hope is in you. Our help is in you. We look to the hills. Where does our help come from? It comes from the maker of heaven and earth. Bless us all as a church and a community of the people of God. And protect us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit's presence with us. And uh, although we can't see him and we can't hear him, we know he is with us because your word tells us this. And we know he is helping us and he will guarantee even our resurrection on the last day. Bless us then in our little service today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the title of the sermon is The Bread from Heaven, and of course it is on the, the feeding of the 5,000. The number referred to in the text is 5,000 men. But it doesn't say anything about women and children. Now, women and children would almost certainly be wanting excitedly to see this miracle worker who had just come back from Jerusalem. Was this the Messiah? There was great excitement. Scholars say that it's likely to be nearer 20,000. Um, and the miracle took place at the eastern side of Lake Kin Kinneret. That's the modern way of saying the Sea of Galilee. Most likely at a place now termed the Golan Heights, which was high ground above the village of Bethsaida, which is on the lake. So we're looking at the other side from Capernaum, but still very near the far end of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus had returned from Jerusalem recently. He performed miracles there and delivered powerful teaching about the, the relationship of the Father and himself. And he had spoken and acted with authority. This was the key feature. Who is this that comes with this authority, calling himself equal with God? He even drew, drove out the money changers in the temple with a whip. And he clearly saw himself as sent from God. And we, we, we hear this. Surely only the expected Messiah could do all these things. This was the time of the Passover, the Pesach, and a crowd was forming in Capernaum where Jesus was staying in Peter's mother-in-law's house. And this crowd was gathering with great fervor and excitement. They feverishly sought to meet Jesus or to see him. Jesus had, spent, had sent out the twelve disciples and they had just returned and they wanted to have a meeting with him, have a meal, and of course discuss their, what happened with them. But because the comings and goings of the mass of people was so intense and overflowing, 
They could not find a, a place to sit, never mind having a meal. There was no peace to talk and pray, even to eat. Capernaum, or better, Kufarnehem, that's what Capernaum means in Hebrew and in Arabic, which means the village, Kufar, the village of the prophet Nahum. This was a very small village, and it seems to have been completely overwhelmed by the gathering crowd who sought Jesus. The growing masses of, of Jews had come to a small village, the small village of Capernaum, seeking him out. A great number of Jewish people came from all over Galilee. We wonder where the crowd could come from. Galilee is sparsely populated. Well, there are around 200 Jewish villages um, scattered around Galilee and at this time, each with a population of about three to 400. Tiberias was a larger center of fishing on the lake and it had a population of around 3,000. The crowd then would have gathered from all of the villages and from Tiberias. Also, some may have come from Jerusalem following Jesus. Jesus' boat was sailing close to the coast. They were following him. They could see him as he sailed over to the other side of the lake. He followed the coast. And when Jesus got to Bethsaida on the other side of the lake and went ashore, he saw the great crowd. And he had compassion on them. They were like sheep without a shepherd. It was time, the time of the Passover, yes, the great celebration of the liberation of the Hebrew people from Egyptian oppression. The crowd rapidly coming together would all be Jews who would have on their minds liberation from Egypt through the great leader Moses. Now they could see and hear the teacher and miracle worker, Jesus, the Messiah. They wanted to see him perform another miracle, but they had another more ominous purpose. They sought to take him by force and install him as the king of the Jews. This crowd's purpose was political revolution. It appears that this had become a great political rally to do with liberation of the Jews from Herod and Roman oppression. In the spirit of Pesach, the Passover, and in the leadership of Moses, the great mass of Jews followed Jesus around the coast and some ran before him. They were disorganized. Jesus' compassion on them resulted in him teaching them many things. In John, we read that Jesus went up on the mountain and sat down to rest with his disciples, but the crowd followed him there. Jesus' circumstances were now in place for the great sign of the miracle which he was about to perform. But Philip, having seen so many miracles, still did not understand, and Jesus tested him to show up his lack of spiritual vision. The Passover centers on the unleavened bread and wine, and the sacrificial and the sacrificial lambs spread on the lintels of the doors. We have bread, we have wine and we have sacrificial blood as the major elements in the Passover. The miracle was the sign and symbol of the sacrifices of the Passover lambs. Jesus is aware that he is the Lamb of God, 
that he is the sacrificial lamb. In the Holy Communion, first termed the Eucharist, the symbol of his body was bread, and in the haste of the Exodus, they ate unleavened bread and drank wine, which became the great symbols of their freedom from Egypt and their slavery to the Egyptians. The next bread they would eat was the manna, the manna that came from heaven every morning. This was the bread from heaven. This manna, also unleavened bread, became the symbol of the Passover bread. The manna was the bread from heaven. The bread of this miracle multiplied from five small loaves. This was also bread from heaven. Philip's question, where can we buy bread for them? becomes a silly question. We cannot buy this bread. It is free. It is the bread from heaven. We can see now the connection between the Passover bread and the communion bread, which Christ calls his body broken for you. Jesus restores order in the crowd by having them sit down in hundreds and fifties on green grass. Then Jesus takes what are really the symbols of the five small loaves from the child and the three fish. The fish would be pickled and it really it would be a side dish. The bread cakes were the main meal. Taking a mere a meager portion of food from the world, he looks up to the sky and gives thanks to God. Then he breaks the bread and divides it. And the division continued with a great provision from the meager food from the world, which would satisfy the appetites of the, of the 20,000. This bread didn't seem to end. It went on and on. The bread was broken and given out to all to eat and be filled. This bread that Jesus broke and divided, and after a prayer thanking God, I believe had a connection with the Passover bread. What was the sign of this miracle of the feeding of the 5,000? The sign revealed Jesus as himself, the bread of life. This is the key. Jesus is the bread of life. He feeds the multitudes. He in no way will cast them out. So in the miracle, they were given um, again bread from heaven. Come everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Moses was the great political liberator, acting on behalf of God, who proclaims to the, the Pharaoh, set my people free. When they were free, they grumbled because they were starving. The Lord said to Moses, behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven to you. And the manna which sustained their life was given every day. The bread from heaven which rained down every morning satisfied their bodily need. They were amply fed by it. In verse 31, the ones following Jesus the next day after the miracle said, Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he, Moses, gave them bread from heaven to eat. They were trying to understand the meaning of of the present miracle. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. I am the bread of life. In the provision of the miraculous appearance of the bread, the Jews would remember their past 
as Hebrew slaves. And so they saw a connection between the manna and the bread of the miracle also rained down from heaven. For the second time they were given bread from heaven, but the manna was to satisfy the hunger of the body. This was the sign of provision from God through Moses, the manna was the sign of liberation. They were not liberated to starve, but to victory. They perceived the Messiah as a liberator in the form of the style of Moses. This was on their minds. They are in the fervor and excitement of the second exodus, liberty from Roman oppression, and oppression of Herod Antipas, the vassal king of the Jews, a king who was not Jewish, representing Roman rule. Jesus proved by the miracles to be the one sent by God, the Messiah, the greatest liberator, now seen in the shadow of Moses, the bread from heaven, was the food of victory. The Jews did not get the true significance. They never did. Those who witnessed the miracle and ate the bread got the wrong message. They saw the sign of the miracle to be physical and disworldly and indeed political. It heralded the beginning of the revolution, the rebellion against the Romans. And so the crowd were fired up. They had received again the bread of liberation. And they did, but it was not liberation from the oppression of the Romans, but from their own sin, which was, in reality, their first prison. We read then about the return journey to Capernaum. In the evening after the miracles, the disciples got back in the boat to return to Capernaum. You will remember, Jesus remained. I think he was seeking to withdraw and to hide as he perceived that they, that they, certain members of the same assembly, were about to take him by force to make him king. They wanted now a coronation of a worldly king as Saul had been. So Jesus when he could slip away under the cover of night, when not seen, walked on the water and caught up with the boat the disciples were in. If we didn't remember um, the walking on the miracle of the water walking on water as following on from the feeding of the five thousand, I'm reminding you now this miracle was on the same day as the feeding of the 5,000. Two miracles. But there was a third miracle. As soon as Jesus was in the boat, they were immediately at the western shore. A day of three miracles. And now other boats sailed in from Tiberias to Bethsaida, all coming in the fervor of this great celebration. I think they came to join the the national fervor, but they did not find Jesus in Bethsaida. When it became known that Jesus was not there, the crowd, which was still on the east side, got in the boats and all sailed to Capernaum. Again, I think that many would have walked round the coast. It's not so very far. When they got to Capernaum on the west coast, They sought Jesus and asked him details about his coming to Capernaum. Remember, they saw the boat leaving with only the twelve disciples. And they were puzzled about how he could have got back to Capernaum. Jesus did not answer the query. Rather, he cautioned them. Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of loaves, and this 
worldly motive. Then the profound words in verse 27 of chapter 6. Do not work for the food which perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. The Son of Man we can take as a messianic title. Jesus is revealing and using the title who he really is. Then amazingly they asked him for a sign so that they could believe in him. They saw the sign of the miracle, this amazing division of loaves and fish, and yet they're asking him for another sign. And they talked about the manna which Moses gave them. You read about this in the chapter. It is as if they would not believe or they could not. They had the sign and the miracle of the bread and the little fish, which they were comparing with the manna at this point. Now Jesus states, The bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall never hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But to the crowd who experienced the miracle and sought Jesus, he said, You have seen me, yet you do not believe. Now they grumbled. Who is saying this? Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say he came down from heaven? They did not believe. They did not have ears to hear or eyes to see. Nor were they serious even concerning their own religion. Indeed, they were profoundly ignorant, as were the two disciples on the Emmaus road after the resurrection. Jesus said, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. This is the true meaning of the miracle of the bread from heaven. It is that Jesus himself is the true bread of life and life eternal. This is the true food of soul. Jesus' broken body is the broken bread of the Lord's Supper, which is a right interpretation of the Passover. Unless we eat his flesh and drink his blood, metaphorically and figuratively, um, which we do by eating the symbols of communion bread, and drinking the, the wine, symbols of his body and blood broken for us and shed for us. In true belief and in true worship, in our hearts, um, we can find true freedom. We can find freedom through Christ. But this is not liberation of a political means. Amen. Let's pray together. We are coming now to the Holy Communion part of our service. And after the prayer, we will carry on. And um, Father, we thank you for the bread from heaven. We thank you that Jesus is our true nurture our true nourishment, our true soul, feeder of souls and keeper of souls. We thank you that he went to the cross to die for us and his blood was shed and on the cross his body broken. We want to bless you that whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you that we can come now to your holy table for our agape love meal. Blessings to everyone here. May they understand and know deeper 
your great nature of love and of provision and of forgiveness. For Jesus' sake, amen. I have here wine, the wine, and the bread. It's out of sight, but I thought I'd better let you see it before we carry on. The coronavirus cannot defeat us. We have the bread of life. The food of the world for the stomach cannot save us. We have the bread of life. We have in this bread and this wine that I have just raised up the symbols of eternal life. Jesus died for us in our place. And if we are born of the Spirit, we are going to heaven. If we become sick or not, let us obey the command of Jesus to love one another. Let us not fear, but in the love that drives out fear, let us take up our faith, believing, trusting, and obeying, and continuing in true peace. So we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We will fear no evil. If God is for us, who can be against us? Neither life nor death, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present or things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus said, Come to me, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. He who comes to me I will not cast out. Jesus Christ is risen. He stands among us as the living Lord and invites us to his holy table. It is his table, not ours, and he has prepared it for his disciples. In his name, we invite you to the joyful feast, all who turn from their sins. Trust in him as their saviour and seek to live a new life in the power of the Holy Spirit, his spirit, and at peace with their neighbours, caring for one another, not judging, forgiving. Hear the words of the institution of the Lord's Supper. According to the Apostle Paul, the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Bread. In the same way, he took also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. And as the Lord Jesus on the night of his arrest took bread, so I take these elements of bread and wine. 
to be set apart from all common use to this holy use and mystery. And as he gave thanks to God, let us draw near to offer our prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Lord God, with all the angels and the archangels, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever worshipping you and saying together, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, Lord, most high. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, O God, for Jesus Christ, your only Son, who was born of Mary and lived among us, full of grace and truth, who died on the cross in obedience to you, whom you raised from the dead by your power and who reigns as Lord of creation and head of the church, his body, so that through our celebration of it, we might discover the power of his death and resurrection. Grant, O Lord, that the bread we break and the cup we share may be the means through which your Holy Spirit unites us all with Christ and with one another as members of his one body. So may we be his faithful um, disciples and true sisters and brothers to one another until we feast with him in the kingdom through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please take the elements of bread and juice that you have there with you. Place them before you and we will partake of the elements as I continue with Paul's words. Jesus said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We hear your words in Psalm 22 from the cross. You said you are a worm and not a man. You have been mocked, whipped, and finally hung on the cross. But because of this, we are saved. Because of your suffering. And of course we understand your suffering is mainly spiritual, not physical. We are granted forgiveness from sin. Reconciliation with God. And eternal life in heaven. In the glory of the great trinity. The three persons. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. If you are able to do that, if not, that's fine. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing until by the power of the Holy Spirit you overflow with hope. May God's grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ. With undying love, may the God who gives us peace make you completely his and keep your whole being, spirit, soul, and body free from all fault at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.